is around the planet that everybody cleans it up, cleans up their act, and uh, we all live a healthy life after 2050. Canada just mo recently moved to a 35% carbon tax. What are, the, what are the biggest challenges to basically follow through this journey? Uh, each country will have a calculator that you can input those figures and that will measure your carbon out. What, what, what kind of calculator? Where can I find those calculators? This video is brought to you by us, SCM Dujo. We provide awesome courses, guides, best practices for supply chain community. Hi folks, um, welcome to one more episode of the Supply Chain Show. I have uh, Teddy here, or Terrace, right? He is a global leader. He runs our inventory academy from Singapore, originally in Aussie, right? We have been communicating on LinkedIn for a lot of time, you know, community, you know, mostly sharing thoughts sometimes arguing, because that's what good people do, but good or healthy arguments. Uh, he has, a, you know, enormous experience in supply chain as a, as a, as a thought leader, as a coach, as a consultant, right? So he was here in Dubai uh, in a conference, I believe. Yes, Marcus Evans, Marcus Evans conferences. Uh, talking about his new innovations he's doing, maybe that's not the topic today. Today we're going to talk about the decarbonization of supply chain, uh, which is a recent hot topic. It's a topic of the research for Terry as well. So I thought while we're here, you know, we're having a, a social conversation, just take an opportunity and uh, and do a quick video on uh, decarbonization of supply chain, uh, what are the benefits, how we can achieve it, what are the challenges, and any recommendations from Terry. Terry, welcome to the show. Thank you. I really like I'm pretty good. Pretty good, right? So, but in the country, it's a bit warm, but hey, it's not as humid as back in Singapore. It's not, it's not warm. It's, it's not, it's still very cool. You know, we're wearing jackets. It comes in June. We'll talk about, we'll see in June, right? Anyway, so, so, yeah, quickly, if I missed anything in your introduction. Okay, so, decarbonizing the supply chain, hot topic. Yeah. Globes in, uh, I, I, what would you say, it's not really perceived, but, um, stated crisis in the way of the greenhouse gas emissions. So the focus in 2050. 2050 is the target. At the moment, we've got all but eight countries that have signed up. Okay. Um, countries are mainly those that have only got desert. So you know, we can probably understand why they don't want to wait. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a, it's a red hot topic and there's a lot of working parts to it. And I think the, uh, the problem is traction at the moment. Okay. So, just highlight the uh, basic definition to a layman, right? So, okay, most people would understand what decarbonization of supply chain means, yeah. but or somebody would confuse that with carbon neutral or circular economy. There's a lot of terms, right? But Define in a like a basic layman definition of it. What does that mean? Okay, so where we talk decarbonizing the supply chain, every logistics company has their um, a consumption of emission products such as their vehicles that run around in the lighting, the equipment that they use. So it's about finding a way to minimise that or even go outside of your organisation and produce carbon offsets mm -hmm. uh, that will bring down that, that tax companies or countries are going to hit them with. Right. So at the moment, you know, as an example, Canada just mo recently moved to a 35% carbon tax. 35% carbon tax. And that has hit the paper pretty hard. Pretty hard, right? So it's closing down industries over there. So I think it's a good thing that a lot of other countries are standing back and observing what the ramifications are, but it's not pretty. It's not pretty. Not pretty. So, so if, I'm, if I'm a business owner, I'm into manufacturing, you know, or shipping, whatever, I use tons of packaging material, right? Uh, most of them are not, let's call it, uh, degradable or, or what can be, you know, disposed easily, right? Now the packaging are coming, which is, you know, uh, degradable or can be fully compostable, things like that. So I want to start with the challenge first. So where the most businesses, let's, let's stick with logistics because most of our audience is supply chain people anyway, that's their expertise, so we talk about that. So anybody who's in logistics supply chain, right? What are the, what are the biggest challenges to basically follow through this journey? Okay, so it's about the reduction and, and planning your activities on a daily basis to try and reduce your remitting. So if you're doing 24-7 operation, and it's about changing your profile and getting as much done during the light than in the, uh, the night or, or late afternoon. So the less you use your lights, the uh, more you're going to save on power. That's one. Is one. So the other thing you can do, remove a couple of the sheets on your uh, factory roofs and replace them with a page sheet. 
is another way of uh, bringing in natural light and reducing energy consumption. Mm -hmm. The other one is sensor lighting. So w walking up and down the warehouse, for example. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, it'll un only turn on when people are within zone. So they're the basic ones, but the other types can be the waste that you produce. You can sell those. Yeah. Um, cardboard, you can metal content, anything else um, that can be recycled, reused. Don't look at all. Lighting up. Yeah. Looking at selling. So you've got those things to do, but then you can look at the last mile creation within your business for logistics. Where you're using your truck fleet and you manage how they're used properly. So uh, what the last mile process is onboard um, tracking of your vehicles mm -hmm. and mapping the, the, the routes and also optimising based on vehicle traffic accidents and that sort of thing. I mean, when talking about last mile and transportation, the general uh, convention is, oh, let's go for electrical cars or trucks or whatever. But how much difference? I mean, look at the ROI, right? Yeah. So what do you think? <laughs> Am I sold on the uh, electric vehicle concept? No. And I'll say that quite simply, um, once you start loading up trucks where Mr. Volvo will sell you a truck that they say will get you 400 kilometres, uh, ask him what it's like when it's fully loaded. And you'll be lucky to get um, 50 to 60% of your 400 k. Yeah, it's a real issue. Um, is there a fix for it? Maybe hydrogen powered vehicles coming in the near future. It's going to that. But um, don't race out to buy your EV just quite yet. It's um, it's not going to get to your return, and and that return's the price. Yeah, yeah. So don't don't buy Tesla. Uh, Tesla. What do you call it? Electric truck. Whatever you call it. Right. Uh, yeah. Cyber truck. Cyber truck. Don't buy it. Don't buy it. No, but I'll, I want to. Okay. Uh, all the good suggestions you made. Lighting, auto lighting, all that. This meant, right? Uh, we, we, are, we can write a place. We are. In, in, you can write a blog for us. 10, 10 things how you can uh, you can reduce your carbon emission. But basic question. What's gas measure and getting done? I've been into companies, big companies, big brands. Everybody wants to do that. As you know, it's going to be forced upon them. I haven't. And that could, my question could be my lack of knowledge. And that's what I'm asking. I've not seen any easy to use either a matter, a software, a tool, which can say, okay, I am a logistics supply chain director, blah, blah, blah. I have X amount of trucks, or I can use 3PL. I have X amount of warehouse. That's my electricity bill. That's my X amount of people on machines. And that will be my total carbon emission state now. Hear me out. State now. And I'll do 10 things, which Terry has told me in a your blog. If I do that, after X amount of time, I will reduce my carbon emission to Y, X minus 1, right? So my question is, what's your recommendation is around measuring what how bad it is right now? In any any normal guy, just a simple supply chain manager into any company, how, how, how can I start measuring my carbon emissions? Very easily, your electricity bill is one, okay? And your fuel costs is the second. Your each country will have a calculator that you can input those figures and that will measure your carbon out. What, what, what kind of calculator? Where can I find those calculators? Online. How? I've been to buy tax on carbon emissions. Ah, so just so so most companies will have those calculators. Netflix Netflix. will have that already up and really have or they do have? I do have. Let's Google or else. Let's see if that is right or not. I'll Google, Google it as well. That if your country has this calculator. So we use the calculator. Yep. Put the number. Australia. Australia has it. Singapore. Singapore has it. Uh, Malaysia has it. Okay. Here's the thing. Uh, send me those calculators. We're going to put that into a description of this video. You can do it. Thank you very much. Please. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. So use the calculator so you know your current state. After putting your electricity bill, your total what else? Your electricity and all of your fossil fuel consumption so the diesel, petrol, or gas, um, input all those that you're paying charges against, because you're going to have the full fleet of your transport vehicles if you're paying these taxes against. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we do this, and then we will know the emission. We follow recommendations, and over the period of time, we can see how much we've reduced. That's it. So all the governments should be doing up until, say, 2050, right. looking for the reductions. Yeah, yeah. Before they hit you hard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Most of the, uh, we have also a course on SMW on Substance and Sustainability. There's a chapter five. 
uh, a lesson by Paul Derriman uh, in Lesson 7, he talks about if you go towards the journey of uh, sustainability, it's not about reducing carbon emission, it's by virtue of improvement, it will improve your overall supply chain or the performance of overall supply chain. Would you agree or don't agree? If you agree, why? If you don't agree, why not? Will it improve the overall performance? I'd say disagree. And I say that simply because it was the replacement vehicles and the replacement equipment have um, some standard operations capability. Right. So I believe with truck fleet, that's going to be an issue there. But just to diverse for two seconds, the problem is for these logistic companies yeah. that have fleets, mass fleets of vehicles that are traveling at the moment, um, they're looking for offsets against the carbon tax. Problem with offsets globally is they haven't sorted them out yet, and there's a lot of corruption involved with offset. Be very careful about the carbon offset market and where you position or pay for these because they don't exist. Um, okay. And you could be called into the pinch. Called into the pinch. You're going to be, okay, that's, you got to do your homework. You go check, 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 and check. All right, that sounds super good. Uh, okay, so we I'm gonna always be disappointed you already. But I, I believe if you want to improve, make a sustainable, less sus, sustainable. I think it's gonna cost you more on a short term, of course. But well, on the long term, I think it will improve. I would say we try and hold off to the long term. Okay, wait for the technologies to develop. develop. And I say that because, uh, as a classic example, everyone's going toward solar, wind, and hydrogen. Right. Yet, there's an, uh, a professor, Australian, and she developed a battery back in the 70s, mm -hmm. and the chemical battery. It doesn't degrade and it doesn't um, deteriorate over time. So the problem with it back in the 70s, they weren't looking at mass scale energy um, storage. Right. But now the focus is there. So China are using it. Europe are using it on big scale to store solar and wind into these batteries for city use. City use. Mm -hmm. All right, cool, cool, cool. Right, no. Um, what kind of help is out there for people to start? Right, and again, I always believe, you, you know, to start you have to do your own research, your own homework, study first. As I seem to be creating courses, you are sharing a lot of knowledge in the same topic. Uh, we are building a simple marketplace where you, you know, we will be there a few others. What are the other helpful resources available for the folks? There are a lot of places that have been holding back and developing courses or information sessions mm -hmm. in people, uh, simply because there's not enough out there at the moment to to get people switched or engaged through it. Mm -hmm. But as the government start increasing the carbon mm -hmm. tax percentages, and people will engage very quickly. So I'm putting together a, a workshop and course uh, on both to educate people in different countries to live on what the requirements are going to be, but the easy steps to try and get there, but also the precautionaries with the same watch your sets because I bought you. So you're saying if we have to learn this, we have to buy a course? Well, that'll be a good thing, but yeah. no, not really. Not really. You could always attend the workshop that I'm having. I understand. It's still said, tell us something for free. Go on. I'm being preferring. Yeah. Uh, read my blogs. Okay. Which is, yeah? The Inventory Academy. All right. Inventory Academy. Visit. Right. Or oh, I see we got a lot of blogs as well. You just need to read that as well. <laughs> right. No. Okay. That's good. Any final thoughts, Teddy? No, it's, um, it, it is something that will hit us in 2050 is fast encroaching, but my final word on it is you've got 27 years before this thing is a must have. So I think there's new technologies in the wind. I heard one yesterday about somebody that was able to create and generate electricity from the air. Yeah, possible. So once I jump onto that, I can see a whole different line of electrical storage and, and production methods. So it should be better. This will be good. Yep. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. It's been pleasure. I think some really cool tips here, some really good discuss discussion. So as always, thanks to Terry. Thanks to you guys for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. Uh, again, looking forward for our, our arguing with Terry on LinkedIn. Or hopefully we will be joining us for our SEO platform. So you can basically 
hire Tony as well for his expert services and things like this. Uh, so keep it simple, keep it real, ciao, and don't forget to the usual like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.